Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Friends, welcome to our online program. And will I seek you like devotionals of the Bible Academy. Indeed, the Lord is good and his mercies endures forever still on the matters of harvest today. As we approach God's word reverently and humbly, shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. The Bible says the entrance of your word gives light, it gives understanding to the simple. So we open our heart, Lord, to receive from your spirit today. Think through my mind, Heavenly Father, speak through my lips of clay. Grant unto me, as well as your people online, the spirit of wisdom. Grant us revelation in your knowledge. Let the eyes of our understanding be enlightened. Thank you, precious Heavenly Father, for what only you can do. In Jesus' name, let's worship the Lord and the beauty of holiness. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of power and mind, heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and mind. Heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, in the high. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the grace to approach your word reverently and humbly. Give us the grace of the moment. You said the seen eyes, the ear ears, you have made them. Give us a heart that understands your word also. Help us to hear your voice and be guided by you. Thank you, Lord, for your promised harvest. By faith, we receive them, and much more, we receive instructions to be led and guided to where our harvests are. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Welcome once again to our online program, Eli Will I Seek You, Live Devotionals of the Bible Academy. Today, we're reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 30. Verse 21, he said, And your ears shall hear a word behind you, saying, This is the way, walk you in it, when you turn to the right hand, and when you turn to the left. You will hear a word behind you. In the New Testament, Jesus put it in a different form. In John chapter 10, verse 27 to 28, he said, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. You see, one thing that is very important for us to experience harvest is knowing the voice of the master, hearkening to the voice of God. He said, I'm the Lord your God that teaches you to profit, showing you the way you should go. For anyone in Christ, to experience either spiritual harvest or supernatural harvest, it is important for us to follow the voice of the master. It is important for us to know the voice of the master. It is important to also know how God speaks to us. One good reason why God speaks to us is because there are different kinds of harvest in the world. There are people that sow to their flesh and they reap corruption. There are people that sow to the occult and they reap pollution and destruction. The Bible says there are many voices in the world. But as believers in Christ, God wants us to decipher and discern the voice of the enemy. 
and much more be sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit. John chapter 10, verse 27 to 28 tells us, my sheep hear my voice. Notice the word mine. It suggests a relationship between the shepherd and the sheep, meaning if you're not his sheep, you're not likely to hear his voice. So the idea of hearing God's voice begins with a relationship with Jesus, my sheep. Are you one of his sheep? The Bible said the Lord knows those who are his. Let everyone that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Are you one of his? Does the Lord know you as one of his sheep? In the last days, Jesus said many will come to him and say on that day, did we not preach in your name? Did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not cast out demons in your name? Did we not walk miracles in your name? Jesus said he will say to them, I don't know you, you walkers of iniquity. So it's important for us to know that the master must know us. The Lord knows his sheep and they follow him. The Lord knows his sheep and they follow him. God wants us to follow him. Praise the Lord. The key to harvest is not just knowing the voice of the master, but following the voice of the master. You see, harvest is somewhere, but you must know where it is. Otherwise, if you are not used to the voice of Jesus, you will be deceived by the enemy. You will be disillusioned by the, 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 the barraging of the world system and idea. And you will be destroyed by sin, Satan, and iniquity. Hence, it is important for you and I to identify the voice of the master. Jesus said, my sheep hears my voice and they follow me. He said, I know my sheep. And they follow me. My sheep hears my voice, number one. I know them, number two. And they follow me. John chapter 10, verse 27. And they follow me. So one thing is to be part of the sheep of the Lord, being his sheep. Another one is for him to know you, to recognize you. I remember the stories of the sons of Sceva who tried to cast out demons in the name of Jesus that Paul preached. The demons bounced on them and said to these seven sons of Sceva, or six of them, he said, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? The more accurate translation says the Jesus of Paul I know. That means the Jesus that Paul preached, I know. The Paul that belongs to Jesus, I know. Whose are you? Who do you belong to? In whose camp are you from? Friends, listen to me. It is important for you to be on the Lord's side, for you to be guided. Romans chapter 8 verse 14 tells us, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. You can't just claim to be one of his sheep. You can't just Declare, I am his sheep. He said he has to know you. There are people today that claim their eternal security in Christ. And that's cool. God wants to secure you eternally. But don't just call the latter part without fulfilling the first part. My sheep hears my voice and I know them. And they follow me. You see, they want to claim the latter part that says, and I give them eternal life. And they shall never perish. Now, there's a reason why they will not perish. They must have fulfilled the conditions of the preceding verse. And they follow me. The reason why they will continue to live in the reality of eternal life. The eternal life refers to the God's kind of life. In the Greek, it is called Zoe. Is because they follow him. Friends, discipleship is the to follow a sheep. Say that with me. Discipleship is the key to follow a sheep. To harvest spiritually or harvest supernaturally, 
you must have been trained to hear his voice. You must have learned how to discern the voice of Satan and to be sensitive to the voice of the master. Say with me again, discipleship is the key to followership. Let's look at the book of Mark. The Bible tells us that Jesus chose certain people to be with him that he might send them forth. Hallelujah. Come on, I said hallelujah. Now, it's important that we know that it is not enough for us to claim that we belong to Jesus. It's important for us to follow through. The Bible said after two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up. Then shall we live in his sight. And he said, then shall we know. If we follow on to know the Lord, that is going is prepared as the morning, as the rain and the latter rain upon the earth. Let's read the book of Mark chapter 3, verse 13 to 14. So you mean the followership with Christ is not just what you claim. Before you enjoy followership, there has to be a following through. Hallelujah. In Mark chapter 3, Jesus said, and he goes up, the Bible says, and he goes up into a mountain and called unto him whom he would, and they came unto him. The first step is that he called them, and they came. Perhaps that's a salvation experience for you. He said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He called them, and they came unto him. That's what the Lord is doing to us today, calling many people. He said, come unto me. In the book of Revelation, it says, the spirit and the bride says, come. Let him that hears come. Let him that is a thirst come and drink of the water of life freely. That's salvation. That's the first step. He says, and he goes into the mountain and called unto him whom he would, whom he wanted, whom he has chosen. And they came unto him. So it's important to come. But don't just stay at coming. There are some who have just remained at the foot of the cross. They are saved. They are born again. But there is a place for going into the inner court. You see, when you approach the temple of God, there are three major entries. There is the outer court. There is the holy place, which is the inner court. And there is the most holy place. You can't just stay on the outer court and say, I've been saved. I'm going to stay right at the foot of the cross. You don't remain at the cross because Jesus himself did not remain on the cross. He died. He rose again. Hallelujah. Verse 2, 14. And he ordained 12 that they should be with him. You see, first is that they came unto him. And then the next step is that they were with him. They should be with him. There are those who have come to him, but they are not with him. It means they are not following him. It means they have not been taught. They have not been disciples. He ordained to them that they should be with him. Jesus said in the book of Mark 11, he said, learn of me, for I am meek and lowly, and you shall find rest unto your souls. He ordained them that they should be with him, and that they might send them forth to preach. Listen to me, friends. One major key to spiritual harvest, and by spiritual harvest, I mean harvesting scripturally, harvesting the fruits of the Spirit, harvesting the gifts of the Spirit, and harvesting the supernatural moves of God, the sovereign act of God in your life as a person, in your ministry as a called man, in your mission as one called to the nation, it is important for you to follow him. He said, my sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. And the reason God speaks to us is so that we will not be deceived, disillusioned, or be destroyed by the enemy. He said, for the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He comes to lie. He comes to steal. He comes to deceive. 
for Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. Friends, in your desire for spiritual or supernatural harvest, quest, as it were, looking for abundance from God, learn to hear his voice. Learn to know his voice. And learn to hearken to his voice. And they follow me. The idea that God speaks to us is based on the fact that we have a relationship with him. Hence, he called us his sheep. There is a relationship between us as sheep and him as our shepherd. And the significance of the relationship between us is the discipleship process. It's very important that we follow on to know the Lord. We follow on to know. You see, the word followership is also predicated on another word that looks like or sounds like it. Fellowship. You see, as we follow the Lord, we walk with him. Fellowship. The word fellowship is from the word koinonia, joint participation with the Lord. The shepherd is committed to our welfare. The shepherd is responsible for guiding us as a sheep. The shepherd is protective of us as a sheep. And the shepherd is willing to provide for all of our need as a sheep. But it requires one thing from us, diligence. The Bible said it is required in steward that a man be found faithful. He said in the book of Timothy, study to show yourselves approved unto God, a workman that does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Friends, we must be diligent. We must be committed. We must be dedicated. We must crave after God. Matthew 6.33 Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things shall be added unto you. Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things shall be added unto you. Now, our diligence is as a result of Christ's diligence to us. In the book of Proverbs 27, the Bible said, be diligent to know the state of your flocks and look well to your herds. Jesus is diligent to know our state. Are we diligent to stay with him? Are we diligent to follow on to know the Lord? In Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20, he said, my sheep attend to, sorry, my son attend to my words, incline your ear unto my sayings. In Proverbs chapter 5, verse 1, he said, My son, attend to my wisdom. Now, in final note, on a final note, there is a place of information where we get instruction. There's a place of understanding where we receive direction. But there's a place of wisdom where there is the application of the information and the direction or directives that we receive from the Lord. Hallelujah. John chapter 10, going back to our basis of this course, verse 27 to 28, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. I want to encourage you today. Take time to hear and to know his voice. Take time to follow him. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And because they follow me, look at the word, the colon there. Because they follow me and look at the word and conjunction verb, I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Some fellows just emphasize the word they shall never perish. What about the fact that he said they must follow him? Hallelujah. And then he said, because they follow him, no one will be able to pluck them out of my father's hands. Why? Because he and his fathers are one. 
Heavenly, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the grace of followership through discipleship. For the grace to follow and to know the Lord. We surrender to you. We ask for help on a daily basis to walk worthy of you unto all pleasing and be fruitful unto every good work. We rebuke the voice of the enemy, the voice of the adversary. We come against the deceitful voice of Satan. We silence the voice of the oppressor. We, in the name of Jesus, we open our hearts to follow the Lord. We open our hearts to follow on to know the Lord. In the name of Jesus. We say thank you, Father. God blessed be your name for answers to our prayers. today. In Jesus' name we pray. Well, once again, thank you for staying with us. Keep following the shepherd. He loves you. Shalom.